Hello and welcome to a new webinar about Microsoft Defender for Cloud. My name is Julia Story and I am a CXC, CXC program manager for Defender for Cloud. And today with me, we have a Vasabi Pasula, also a CXC program manager for Defender for Cloud. Together, we are presenting the new Defender CSPM security solution. The agenda today includes today's cloud security challenge, the contextual cloud security, and the actual Defender CSPM features. As we all know, cloud environments are by nature dynamic resources. They are constantly changing, and such is making it very difficult to understand the security posture and being able to identify gaps. This means that continuous monitoring is a very critical component. Our typical cloud security solutions detect vulnerabilities and misconfigurations, but the growing number of assets can result in hundreds, even thousands of security recommendations, which will leave you to wonder where to start. These can be summarized in those three main challenges. Lack of visibility and coverage across hybrid and multi-cloud environments, overwhelming volume of security recommendations, and fragmented tools across different clouds. Well, Microsoft Defender for Cloud and its security posture management capabilities provides a solution to those challenges. It will help you understand why some recommendations are more important than others. You can then focus on the biggest risk in your organization. There will be no more isolated security signals, and you will be able to know how one vulnerability could be the key to opening all the doors in your environment. We offer capabilities that help security administrator to prioritize remediation and gain resource insights. Those capabilities reveal connections across your assets. We'll focus on the context and the combination of the security issues that put your most critical resource at risk. Defender for Cloud use curated path to conduct attack path analysis on your environment and show how one vulnerability could be the golden ticket for attackers. So you can then prioritize more effectively than ever before. And if you want to take your vulnerability searching and resource exploring to the next level, you can do so very easily. You can use the new query tool to build a custom query and explore all the resource in your environment. And you can get started very easily in minutes by leveraging the agentless onboarding simply without installing any type of new apps, new agent on your cloud resources. However, you can still, if you wish, still install those agents with easy to gain deeper insights into the workload and enhance continuous monitor capabilities. Microsoft for Cloud provides cloud native application protection that help you to secure the most dynamic multi-cloud and hybrid environment. We support Azure, AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and of course, the on-premise environment. Defender for Cloud will unify your DevOps security management, will strengthen and manage your security posture, and finally, detect threats and protect your workloads, all with the support of automated processes to remediate your findings. Now, Vasabi will take, it, will take you over on the journey of exploring our new capabilities. Okay then, Vasabi, that's your time. The floor is yours. Thank you, Julio. So let's talk about uh, the new features of Defender for Cloud, uh, which are contributing to contextual security. Uh, I think, do you just share, share the screen? Can you share the screen? Yes. Can you see my screen? Not We're yet. still on, yeah. If you have a problem, share the screen. I can keep my screen, my screen share, and then you 
you just tell me the next next, please. I hope you can see the screen now. Yeah, we can. Yeah, sorry for that. So let's talk about the new features of Defender for Cloud, uh, which are contributing to contextual security. So Defender for Cloud already provides deep visibility and uh, real-time protection for your workloads uh, using agent-based solutions. Uh, but relying solely on agents can be challenging to manage the security posture. Agent deployment across the workloads uh, take time and effort, and uh, also you need to cooperation between the security and application teams. Uh, also, if you look at in the dynamic environments where there are short short lived VMs or in environments uh, where there are they are scaling in and out, uh, it's difficult to manage the agent deployment. So this can leave you with blind spots on potential security issues. Agentless scanning is the solution for these kind of environments. With agentless scanning for VMs, you can get frictionless and instant visibility on security posture without installing any agents. Let me explain how uh, the agentless scanning is done. Defender for Cloud takes a snapshot of VM disks and copies it into an isolated scanning environment. How often do we take these snapshots? Yeah, each VM is scanned once in a day. The necessary metadata is acquired from the disk and uh, then it is sent to the Microsoft engines. Defender vulnerability management uh, solution does a deep analysis uh, to check for uh, vulnerabilities and the results are sent to Defender for Cloud portal. From there, Defender for Cloud uh, immediately deletes the copied snapshot of the disk. And just to give a, a heads up, agentless scanning for VMs is currently supported for AWS and Azure VMs. With agentless scanning for VMs, you will get wide visibility on installed software and vulnerabilities. And moreover, you don't need to open ports for agent communication or whitelist any URLs. One more advantage uh, is uh, it works by analyzing disk snapshot of your VMs. So without uh, interfering with the running VMs, there is no performance impact on your machine. Defender for Cloud combines the breadth and depth of agentless and agent-based approaches. Uh, so agentless scanning provides you instant visibility over critical posture issues, uh, while uh, the agent-based scanning does the real-time protection. Both are now seamlessly integrated and are combined under the same platform, that is Microsoft Defender Vulnerability Management. And both of them provide advanced detection, investigation, and response capabilities. So this uh, analysis is powered by Microsoft Defender Vulnerability Management. So you will get results in a unified view, whether your machines are already managed by Defender for Endpoint or not. Let me take you through a demo, how this works. So let me pick up a subscription in my uh, Azure portal. So here you can see the Defender CSPM is free. Currently it is in public preview and uh, it is free uh, for now. And you can turn it on in your environment. Once you turn it on, you can configure the Defender CSPM uh, for agentless scanning. Let us configure the agentless scanning from Defender uh, CSPM plan. So just to give a heads up here again, uh, uh, agentless scanning capability is available with both Defender CSPM plan and Defender for Service plan too. So I'm going to uh, take you through the Defender CSPM plan uh, to configure agentless configuration. So here we can see agentless scanning for machines. Uh, again, this uh, feature is in preview and you can turn it on. Once you turn it on, uh, so the agentless scanning can be turned on at the subscription level. And if you, for any 
reason you want to uh, exclude any of those machines uh, from agentless scanning, you can configure a tag, uh, a exclusion tag. So in my environment, I just configured agentless scan to no. So any machines which are configured with this tag will not be uh, included in the agentless scanning configuration. Once you configure this, say apply and continue. So this is how you configure your Defender CSPM uh, and uh, agentless scanning configuration and click on save. So this now let us go go back to the inventory. So once you configure this, it takes uh, some time uh, around 24 hours for the agentless vulnerability scanning uh, results to appear in your inventory. So if you go back to the inventory, uh, so I can find uh, so these are uh, pre populated results that I have so I can click on a virtual machine which uh, there is no agent installed. I'm going to pick up this machine and even without the agent installed, I can see the recommendations and installed applications for this machine. So if I go to the installed applications page, I can see uh, all the vulnerability, all the installed applications here. So here we can see there is a log4j uh, available here. So I want to go ahead and fix this. So go back to the recommendations on this machine. And I want to fix this uh, vulnerability. So click on machine should have vulnerability findings resolved recommendation. And I can see uh, <coughs> the sorry. <laughs> so I can see the Apache log4j uh, mm, to be updated with the high severity is here. I want to fix this vulnerability in my environment. So I can see all the details about this vulnerability. So this is powered by Defender Vulnerability Management and it, it is a high severity vulnerability with the, all the CVE IDs. Um, it can be seen here. So I can go ahead and fix this in my environment. I can take action and fix this in my environment. So this is how uh, the agentless uh, vulnerability assessment or uh, agentless uh, scanning works and gives you the complete visibility into your environment even before uh, deploying any agents into your environment. The second uh, or the next cool feature uh, to discuss here is uh, agentless vulnerability assessment scanning for your ECR images in AWS. So this new capability helps reduce the attack surface of your Kubernetes estate in AWS by continuously scanning images to identify and manage the container vulnerabilities. So with this new release, uh, there is a significant improvement uh, to our scanning interval. So ECR images are scanned every six hours and uh, any new image uploaded will be scanned within one hour. The findings are available in Defender for Cloud as recommendations and uh, customers can use the built in automated workflows to take action. Say you want to open an ITSM ticket uh, to fix a high severity vulnerability in an image. The agentless model further minimizes the operational friction and it is important to note that no images are transferred out of customer accounts as as part of this scan process. Let's see how to configure vulnerability assessment for AWS ECR repositories. So take, uh, take any of your AWS connector, uh, go to your Defender plans, click on the containers plan and see uh, it is uh, on. And click on the settings and you can see the vulnerability assessment uh, that can be turned on. So let us turn it on and save. And that's how you get to start uh, doing the vulnerability assessment for your ECR uh, repositories. Now let's go to the Cloud Security Explorer. So as we all know, adding context to the existing information adds more value and helps us make more informed de decisions. 
So the platform behind the contextual security is the cloud security graph. Cloud security graph, uh, it's a graph based context engine that exists within Defender for Cloud and uh, it collects data from various data sources. Uh, it collects data about your cloud resources, not only in Azure, but also about uh, multi cloud resources. And uh, it also collects information like uh, how these resources are connected to each other and if the resources are exposed to the Internet, what identities and permissions are associated with these resources and also the vulnerabilities on these resources. Defender for Cloud is now integrated with uh, Defender external attack surface management, uh, which is Defender EASM as we call it. And EASM actually collects data for all the publicly exposed assets of an organization outside uh, from outside in. Uh, so it collects information like uh, be it IP addresses, domains or web pages and all these things. So now all this data is collected and then uh, used to build a graph of interconnected cloud, cloud assets and Defender for Cloud scans the graph and detects ex any exploitable paths uh, that attackers can use in this uh, in order to breach your environment. So it can uh, give you all the information. The graph can give you all the information about uh, what VMs are uh, have uh, internet exposure or a, a, what data stores are actually having any sensitive data on it. So once you have this uh, cloud security graph, the cloud security explorer is the one which gives you the capability to explore and uh, and customize the Defender for Cloud findings and uh, run any custom queries on top of your graph. So you can start using one of the predefined templates. Uh, so let me take you through the demo for here. So here you can see the uh, how the UI looks like. So this is the cloud security explorer. So it allows you to customize uh, all these findings. So you can see there is a template based uh, query or you can build your own query. So you can start using any of these predefined templates uh, or you can build uh, your query from the query builder option. So here, uh, let us say uh, we want to explore our, uh, our environment or uh, you want to hunt uh, your environment. If you have any VMs with open SSL uh, vulnerabilities, let us open this query. And see the uh, entire uh, query has been populated automatically from the template itself. And if you search this, if you if you have any uh, open SSL vulnerabilities in your environment, uh, fortunately, I don't have any uh, open SSL vulnerabilities in my environment, so it doesn't show up any. Say now let us try building our own query. Uh, let us not take the template. Let us try to build my own query. So here I'm trying to search for the uh, virtual machine uh, with uh, certain in, uh, any vulnerabilities that it has. Uh, with uh, high severity vulnerabilities and click on search. So this gives you all the virtual machines that are uh, having high vulnerabilities uh, in your uh, environment. Now let us uh, extend this query by adding more context to this. So let me add say uh, I want to see what virtual machines are exposed to the Internet besides having these vulnerabilities. So I can prioritize the virtual machines which uh, with vulnerabilities I want to fix and I want to fix the vir uh, virtual machines which are exposed to the Internet now. So I can prioritize. You can also see that uh, say I want to check uh, on a particular VM what uh, vulnerabilities it has. Say try to extend this query by saying say uh, I want to also see out of these uh, VMs with vulnerabilities what uh, virtual machines are also exposed to the Internet. Say select and say exposed to the Internet. 
and out of those uh, many virtual machines only one virtual machine out of my environment is exposed to the internet so i i this, i have to prioritize this virtual machine to fix first and i can prioritize uh, maybe i can uh, fix the vulnerabilities on the uh, virtual machines which are not exposed to the internet at a later point of time so this is how the cloud security explorer gives you the visibility into your environment. You can drill down into your environment and prioritize which risk to be mitigated first and which you can take it at a later point of time. Or say uh, let us walk through uh, one more query. Say I want to uh, fix with some of my storage accounts. I want to see uh, how many storage accounts that I have uh, with uh, exposed internet and I, I want to see uh, what storage accounts are there with the exposed internet. I have so many storage accounts with the exposed uh, internet um, here, but does it matter for me to fix all of them at once or should I prioritize uh, the storage accounts with only the sensitive data within that? So let me extend this query saying uh, uh, I want to prioritize my storage accounts which contains the sensitive data. So now the list is short like the storage accounts uh, I need to prioritize first out of the long list is only two storage accounts which uh, have uh, sensitive data and I can prioritize these two, two storage accounts to be uh, fixed first and the other ones at the later point of time. So this is how this uh, entire context of drilling down into your uh, environment and fixing the vulnerabilities you, you have to fix um, on priority gives you more strength to the security teams. And the next capability that I want to uh, just give an overview about is govern and automate remediation. So you can drive governance. So you know how, how to fix these things and you, ma ma many a times the security teams don't take the remediation part. They want to uh, hand over the responsibility to the re relevant stakeholders. So you can actually assign the owners who should remediate the particular vulnerabilities or uh, in the environment it's the uh, it's the workload owners you want to assign and you can configure what should be the due date for that and you can configure the rule and you can also remind them through the email saying that uh, by this date you need to remediate this uh, vulnerability within your environment so this way you can actually make people responsible to take a uh, responsibility of fixing their vulnerabilities within their environment uh, which they own uh, also there is an option for automated remediation so uh, you can do the continuous assessment and integrate it with the service now uh, uh, tool where you can uh, use the our, uh, our uh, logic apps which is uh, you can define the entire workflow how to fix the remediation and you can actually uh, configure the entire workflow automatically so both the options that you have either make people responsible to remediate or you can go with the automated remediation so let me show you how the manual remediation, how the governance part is going to work. So you just need to uh, go to your environment uh, under uh, pick any of your subscription under governance rules. You can add a rule. So while adding the rule, you can say the rule name. Uh, so you can fix uh, based on the severity. Say you want to uh, pick all the high severity uh, vulnerabilities to be fixed or based on a specific recommendation uh, say you want to fix all the database vulnerabilities and you want to make the database administrator responsible for that so uh, you can uh, pick up the specific recommendations and set the owner through the email uh, so you can specify the email of the owner and you can specify the remediation time frame whether it should be uh, a week or a month or what is the time that you want to give to the uh, respective owner how much time that they can take to fix this and there is a up grace period option so when you say grace period uh, you can actually uh, give that grace period so that while the uh, 
workload owners are going ahead and fixing these vulnerabilities, uh, the secure score will not be affected so that uh, you, you give that grace period for them. Once the grace period is over and the uh, vulnerabilities are not fixed, it again goes, uh, it will affect your secure score. And also you can notify the owners uh, every week uh, uh, for whatever the open uh, items are there on their plate. And you can also notify the direct managers on a weekly basis if any overdue tasks are there on, on the respective owners. So this way you can uh, make people responsible to fix their vulnerabilities in their uh, in the environments that they own. So I, I, I will hand it over to Julio to talk about the attack path analysis. Thank you so much, Vazamim. I'm very, very excited to hear that now I can easily scan my workload without installing any agent. Agentless is a leap forward, a really good and cool feature. And I've been able to consume the data, those vulnerability findings using the Cloud Security Explorer. And finally, I've been able to manage the, uh, the actions that are needed to be taken in order to remediate those recommendation really really excited it's time to go over the attack path now so my slide works okay so what is an attack path well often we use the term attack vector an attack path is now the same as an attack vector and sorry for the the game of the wording here however almost every time those terms are used as they will be the same. So my duty today is to show the difference. An attack vector is a single method used by an attacker to compromise an environment. An attack path, on the other end, it's like a map. It's like a recipe. It's a visual representation of exploitable attack vectors. The attack path gives emphasis on connecting the dots, just like you see in the pictures, and looking at the entire context as, a, as, as an imposed risk. It is contextual. The context incorporates elements from a variety of risk categories, starting from a network exposure of a, the assets in question, a VM perhaps, continuing to the asset whose access, access privileges are elevated by risky role and permissions attached it, all the way to the crown jewel, the exploitation of the sense of the data. It's like looking to the lens of an attacker. Attack path can uncover new and unknown risk rather than those originating from known attack vectors. So today, most security teams are still focused on security findings. Attack path are very different from security findings. While the security findings are a good place to start to protect your cloud environment, those singular findings can leave very often holes in the bigger picture. The approach of connecting the dots provides a more sophisticated view of the vulnerabilities than a single security finding will expose. It includes the context and evaluates the combined risk. And the key here is the risk, the combined risk. At the core of the attack path analysis, there is the new cloud security graph, just like the one that is used by Security Explorer. It's the same engine, and Vasavi has well already explained what is the security graph. And that is the key, the fundamental key to uncover new and unknown risk. So why does all this matter? Why attack path is so important? Well, using attack path analysis is a huge leap forward for a cloud security. Having a reliable attack path analysis system in place allows for a contextual and well-informed overview to address security blind spots. And it helps with both tracking and prioritizing threat remediations. And now with this, I want to go ahead and move into a demo. Let me switch off the demo. 
So I got an environment that is uh, owned by with labs corporations with lab is, is a company that develops uh, IOT's control uh, control boards. Has it just acquired a new company cyber Hunt labs in the new company? There is a new development team that is on the journey developing new app and they need an environment to test and um, to test the compiled code for the new application. So what they did, they go ahead and they provision a few new resources for the new environment, for this small environment. They provision a virtual machine, some Azure SQL databases, storage accounts to host data, as I'm sorry, to host files, and then as well as some key vaults. However, unfortunately, because the company was a very reasonably inquired by Wiz Labs uh, Corporation, all the policies that Wiz Labs has usually enforced to prevent misconfigurations and uh, possible security vulnerability have not fully yet applied to cyber Hunt labs therefore cyber Hunt labs um, uh, engineers really were able to provision at their leisure anything they wanted so likely will labs has find that that microsoft defender for cloud it's got this new feature called the Defender CSPM. Unlikely, a few days ago, after you know Microsoft has uh, presented the, through the Ignite, has made available to public preview. So enable the, the Defender CSPM, and then with the new Defender CSPM, it was able to very easily and quickly capture the vulnerabilities that this new environment built by Cyber Home Labs has exposed. The vulnerabilities, are exposed through the attack path, so the famous attack path. How you look? How do you go ahead and look at the attack path? Well, the first thing you do is to open up your Defender for Cloud. On the Defender for Cloud, you got a section called Recommendation. So if you're new to the Defender for Cloud, or if you're now, you're gonna see that this new banner now is available, and it's called Attack Path. And here you have a number and attack path. So there are eight paths that were discover it with the new Defender CSPM. If I click it on it, it will take me to basically to the attack path panel. Here, the analyst, the security analyst from Wiz Labs Corporation can easily see there are a total number of path, attack path, which includes about 12 resources. Uh, and then there are about three active recommendations that can easily be remediated so that we can actually kill the chain of the attack. Those paths are categorized as the following. Eight are compute abuse, five are data exposure, two are credential exposure. Now over here, we have now the list of those paths as they are categorized individually. So you have VMs that with high severity vulnerability and exposed to the internet, we also have the same types of a high VM with high severity vulnerability, this and exposed to the internet, but this time with a read permission to a data store. And we have a five path for this. And I want to show you why we have a five. I mentioned the new environment has um, uses a SQL database and as well as storage account. Well, those SQL databases storage account are counting towards this path. Also, there is a path for key vault, all right? Here, the VM, which is also exposed to the internet, has a repermission to key vault. Most likely, the key vault will hold, will help, will hold the secrets to access either the database or the storage account. So it's vulnerable to uh, find those secrets. And also you have a VM with just severe, high severity vulnerability, which has permission to key vault. Let's explore the the second one the one the key vault and one of the data stores for the first thing i want to do is okay let me look into this okay i have one path so i'm gonna click, click and open up the path very quickly i can see all the resources type there are uh part of the path i have a managed identity a key vault a subnet an ip a virtual machine and as well as the virtual network okay and i have the recommend remediation steps in order to kind of like remediate obviously this path also I got you know information about the potential impact and you can read it, it says an attacker with a network access to the machine can exploit the vulnerability gain a remote execution code and use the permission to identify to ident 
of the identity and still credential for the key vault. Well, this is actually very critical because now I know that if someone through this public IP address gains access to my, to the, uh, my demo VM over here, simply because this demo VM has RCE exploitation vulnerability, he can finally move laterally and and then uh, spoof on the identity of the machine, gain access to this key vault, steal the secret, and father like you know steal my jewels, right? My my uh, my assets here. So now, if I look into each of those resources, I also get additional information. Number one on the IP, I get informations, insight, and the recommendations. Now, I just want to highlight one thing. If you also have enabled your Microsoft Defender ESM, which is a separate solution, security solution, which is built separately, also the ESM will be able to assess the um, your 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 nodes, your the public IP, your host, your domains, basically your environment, and the data uh, and the results of this assessment. It's also integrated in some form within the attack path, but you need to also enable ESM. Let's say that you know I had ESM enabled. Well, I will have under the inside of my IP address a little integration um, a button which I can click and see what information ESM has found about this IP address. I don't have over here and I apologize, but in the meantime, this is basically a public IP address and I have some information related to it. Next, I want to see my, my, my VM. If I click on the VM, Again, I see some information about the subscription it belongs to, the resource group which is a member of, and then what's important, the inside, the security insights. This is the results, all the vulnerability assessment and all the findings that the CSPM part of Defender for Cloud has exposed through its findings. So I have a bunch of CS, I'm sorry, CSB, CBEs, they're considered remote code execution, so very important to address those. Also, I know that the, inter the machines expose the internet and has also other vulnerabilities which are also related, I mean, um, highlighted as a high severity. So this, mach this machine itself is high vulnerable. I need to act very quickly. I cannot block the IP address because it needs an, an IP on the public side to access to my application, but I can definitely start killing the chain of my lateral movement by simply patching all the, um, the vulnerability and also uh, restrict the rules of accessibility to the specific IP address. And that is actually presented in the recommendation list. I have a three unhealthy recommendation, one which is the machine should have vulnerability finding a result. Okay, I just say that, right? Cool, management ports should be closed. I say that as well, okay, check, I'm gonna do that. All network ports should be restricted on network security group associated with the virtual machine. Also, I say that those are the common sense, right? We project those recommendations, we, we present it, you can then click it on it, and just like Vasa be exposed early through the, um, through the governance rule, you can now take an action. When you take an action, you can do pretty much remediate at a time. You can trigger logic apps if you have so in order to remediate automatically that um, the vulnerability or I mean the recommendation, or you can also you know assign an owner um, so that the owner will go through the process of the change of request and then go on so forth. I mean so on so forth and you know apply the change uh, at a specific um, date. Okay, now. Um, the, 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 the look and feel is pretty much the same as you click down to the chain. Next is the identity. Here now you have information about the identity. And it is an identity that is an, a managed identity, it's a system identity, system managed identity, and the system managed identity has permission to this key vault. Now let's close this path and let's look at this other path where you have five actually um, path inside of the category. Okay, if I click on over here. We can see that now you have one path for each of the vulnerable uh, data store. I have a path that highlights the fact that this storage account can be accessed from a machine that is being breached from um, from the internet, and simply because this machine has an, a managed entity which also has elevated 
well, I would just say way too much permissions at the subscription level, which will then be in inherited at the resource level, resource group level, which will then obviously be inherited by the uh, final resource and resource group. In this, in this case, you see that this machine has a full contribution uh, role to the um, to the resource group and the level of the subscription. Therefore, this uh, storage account can be easily accessed. Same context for the databases. OK, if I open up the databases, I can see that in the same manner, the um, owner of the machine made a big, huge mistake, probably because wasn't aware how role hardback works and provided the highest level of, uh, you know, elevated permission to the single um, system entities, which it is a um, a big no no in this case, right? So how you hack upon this? Well, because you from those paths, you're seeing a common point of uh, risk, which is basically the elevator permission. The first thing that you would do is besides obviously um, patching the, um, the the VM with all the for for all the vulnerability uh, that has exposed. The next thing that you want to do is also rectify the elevator permission for the system identity. OK, so the next thing you're going to go ahead and either reduce that to the minimum or actually eliminated the permission totally. That will break the chain in uh, completely. OK, again, here is the tech path. Here is also the list of the recommendation and pretty much. Is all you needed in for you to have a full um, picture on what is actually um, non secure on this new environment that the um, developer team from the new acquired company has just provision without knowing really much about Azure. They just want to do something for the development and you actually caught up just in time before the actual breach took place. This is very much proactive. And with this, I am done with my demo, which will then lead back into the presentation. And I want to, number one, thank you everyone to, uh, for attending this webinar. I want to thank you, thank Vasavi and the rest of the team for the sessions. And then I want to now dedicate it the rest of the time for you audience um, to ask questions and we will provide answers. Great. Uh, thank you, Julio. Uh, so we do have a few questions. Uh, one of the first ones is, um, do you have a table to compare the benefits of agentless versus agent? I will leave. I mean, if we have a table internally, I mean, if we can expose a table to to um, to show the differences. Uh, yeah, or you can uh, just briefly discuss what they are. Sure, I'm not sure if we have a specifically a table. I might maybe. I mean, you guys help me if we have some on our documentation. But I mean, the main differences between agentless and agent base is the fact that obviously there is no agent to be installed. Number one. The second one is the um, uh, what do you call it? the uh, the scheduling of uh, the executions as today. Uh, agent less runs once a day every 24 hours, uh, whereas agent less it's um, uh, more continuous kind of thing. All right. So with the agent less, the next next the next uh, results report is next day that you enabled or the next day after the first one, obviously. But in terms of uh, uh, results and context and findings, there are no differences. It's exactly the same. What you see from an agent base when it comes down to vulnerability assessment and inven uh, software inventory, OK, is exactly the same results if you run agentlessly. It's one to one. There are no gaps whatsoever. The only main difference right now is the, um, the scheduling time, but I wanted to stress out there is a huge pro on this, a huge advantage, and that means like you don't have to install anything you just start from Geico right away without worrying about any any sort of like auto provisioning, any provision, any agent, anything like that. Great, uh, thank you. Uh, the next one we have is 
what are the technical requirements for each of the new features, extensions, agents, licensing plans, et cetera? For the new plan, basically is just simply, you know, obviously Azure, having Azure, having the Defender for Cloud enabled and just go on Defender for Cloud and enable the plan under the subscription or, you know, um, add your all the subscription under the management group of the tenant. So really um, just enable that. Once you enable the all plan, which includes the uh, security explorer, the um, attack path, the agent less, and the governance rule, you pretty much have everything you need in order to um, use those capabilities. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question we have is, does this work on disabled or powered off resources? On disabled or powered off these resources, I'm sorry, which 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 one is working for? Is the agentless or um, I'm trying try to understand the the context? It's like agentless. Does agentless works on the on the powered off resources or or the whole thing, all the whole plan? Um, well, we'll wait for um, the person who asked the question to clarify. Yeah. I'll just move on to the next question. Um, <clears throat> where is the snapshot stored and how is it secured? Um, I might leave the uh, the answer for this to our colleagues from PG if they can explain a little bit better. I don't want to uh, um, say something that may be wrong. If anyone sure. please. Yeah. Uh, so so let, let 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 me jump in. I will comment both on the agentless versus agent based and and about the um, uh, the storage of snapshot. Then uh, the snapshot is happening um, inside the service. Uh, there is a temporary snapshot uh, that we create for the VM. We are scanning it and then we uh, destroy the snapshot. It's it's actually not stored for more than a few minutes to complete the the scan. And it's done st inside the service itself. Um, and and some more um, comparison between agentless and agent based. Then the biggest advantage of agentless is very easy enablement and coverage. Uh, you don't need to maintain anything. You need, need don't need to deploy anything. You just click one click and and you will get the results in pretty, in up to 24 hours. While with, with agent based, you will need to uh, deploy the agents and sometimes it's more than one agent. Uh, you need to maintain them, verify that uh, everything is okay. From value perspective, um, if you are interested for CSPM, uh, agentless will bring um, coverage for CSPM, which means uh, vulnerability assessment management um, and other stuff uh, similar to agent based. Um, where you do need agents, and we do believe that for full coverage for deep, deep uh, protection of CWP, of the workload, you need agents. The real time detection depends on agents in order to uh, check what's happening right now in the VM, not what's installed, not the layers, but uh, to, to, to detect the real attack that is going on on the machine. For this one, you will need agent. And that's why if you want to get a proactive protection and not just the uh, cloud security posture for VMs, you will need the agents. So the approach is start agentless, as broad as possible, cover everything, get results uh, for everything and use them in Security Explorer, in the inventory, whatever you use to prevent stuff. Um, but if you want to get a deep detection um, and alerts, uh, deploy the agents. And this will take a bit more effort than just enabling of agentless. Hope it um, clarified uh, the, the hybrid strategy for agentless and agent based. Great, thank you. Um, the next question we have is, uh, how does ages, how does agentless work if you have multiple disks connected to it? Does it take a snapshot of all? It will, yeah, it will take a snapshots of uh, the disks attached to. Now, the disk will be either um, need to be, um, you know, not encrypt or encrypt with a key that is managed by the key vault. If you do encrypt with the, your own personal key, then it's not able to obviously decrypt it, therefore it's not able to to take the um, snapshot and obviously scanning through it. But yes. 
Great. Um, next question is, can you scan PHP web servers sitting on Linux? Can you scan PHP web servers? Uh, that's me you know, like the server itself. I think we could scan on the, you know, in terms of vulnerabilities. So it, it doesn't matter what operating system it is. Uh, yeah. Both Windows and Linux machines are scanned in the agentless scanning. Right. But is the question more towards like vulnerability find on the actual uh, application stack or the operating system, or more like let me know if these up uh, this web apps, the PHP web apps, has known like all OS vulnerability because it's a little bit different context. You know, I don't think we expose um, through the you know those all OS known um, what do you call it, vulnerabilities in the code itself. You know. So if it's that, it's a little bit different. I believe well, ES, ESM will also provide that sort of like visibility in terms of no vulnerability on app. On the right. app code, yeah. <clears throat> um, thanks, and then uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, can agentless work even if we want to configure auto remediation? No, understand the question. Auto remediation is what sorry yeah it's oh. like i'm not sure how it's related to each other auto remediation and agentless agentless is you know detection of vulnerabilities auto remediation you know i assume it's triggering you off of some some rules then uh, they, there are two orthogonal features that they will work re, you know they, they, they don't work with you know they don't interrupt each other or help each other then just two different features Gotcha. All right. I'm sorry. Um, well, that seems to be uh, all the questions uh, we've got. Um, so I'd like to uh, thank you, Vasavi and Julio, for being our guests today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We'd love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.